Welcome to the secondary training. This training is designed for the secondary marketing department or at your lock desk and will cover some basic functions like how to add a lock, uh, the screens and fields you use, some reports and forms, work cues, and some business rules. So let's get started. From the main screen, you'll want to go into your secondary department. So double click on secondary and you'll see the lock information screen. Now here you'll see that you have a grid and right now we don't have any lock records so we're going to need to add a lock record. So I'm going to do that by going up to actions and clicking on insert broker LO lock. Now this is going to open up a series of tabs that I'm going to complete. So here I'm going to enter my lock date and it's going to populate my name, my lock term, it'll automatically populate my lock expiration and of course the day that we requested the lock. Now ProLender is going to automatically change the status to locked, but you can choose some other options depending on the lock record. Now the rest of this information will automatically be populated as we go through the rest of the tabs. So let's take a look at the loan details. Now you notice that some of this information is already completed. When we uh, add a lock, ProLender will automatically copy over some of the information from the loan record, but I can make changes if I need to. So you'll see our loan amount and all of these other items are already populated, which makes it easy for you, the user. Now your pr program information, we can select our program from this list, but again, and we can take a look at all of the defaulted information that will apply to this lock. Um, but again, if it's already been selected on the loan, it's going to automatically populate for you. If anything's missing, you want to go ahead and enter that information. So you can see that we can enter in our uh, prepaid type and some other information to make sure that we complete this section. Now next we have our lock pricing. Now this is where you're going to enter in your, buy, your net buy points and your net sell price. So the gross buy points, we're going to enter it in as a negative. Uh, here you'll see that if you have any adjustments, you want to go up to actions and click on insert pricing adjustment. You'll select your pricing adjustment from the list by double clicking and then you'll enter in the buy price and the sale price. So any adjustments on either side you'll enter here and they'll typically be entered in as a positive. So when you're done click close. Now we've added a pricing adjustment and you'll see that our net buy points is going to take into account that adjustment. Now on our gross sale price this is going to be entered in the 100% format. So in this case, 104.5. Now if we had any adjustments like we do, it's going to take that into account into our net sale price. Next, let's take a look at the rate and margin. Now this tab works the same exact way. You'll enter in your start rate. In this case, we'll enter in 5.2. Uh, we can add any adjustments if we need to. So we'll go ahead and choose stated. Now if there's an adjustment for the rate, we'll enter that. If there's an adjustment to the margin or life cap, we'll also enter that. And you'll see that we do get our final rate after any adjustments. So if there's a gross margin, you'll enter that. If there's a life cap, you'll enter that as well. And those adjustments will be calculated in as well. Now last we have our loan sale info tab and we'll want to make sure that we select our investor from the list. You'll enter in your investor lock date, the in when it expires with the investor. If there's a uh, float date you'll enter that and if you do have to cancel you can enter in that information as well. So you will want to make sure that you complete the rest of the fields and again we default it to locked but if it's registered or requested you can select that as well. You'll select the lock type, enter in your investor loan number, and if they give you a commitment number, you can enter that as well. Next, let's take a look at your loan notes. Now, this is great because you can add notes that apply just specifically to this lock. So I can enter a note saying that we need to do a lock extension and maybe here's some information about the lock extension. And I can even make sure that it shows up in WebLender if we're using that. So let's say I lock the, I enter in that note and now I need to enter in a pricing adjustment for this lock extension. So I'm going to choose my lock extension, maybe it's for seven days, and I'll double click on it, enter in my uh, buy price adjustment, 
and it will show up in or calculate into my net by points. I'll also want to make sure that I manually extend that lock term to include the seven day extension. Once you're done, make sure that you click close and save your changes. This will add the lock record into the grid. Now, if you ever have to go in and cancel this lock and relock with someone else, you can just open it up, enter your lock date, make sure that your lock status is canceled, then you can go back and create a new lock record just like we created the uh, original lock record. Next, let's take a look at the lock reconciliation. Now if we go up to Tools and click on Lock Reconciliation, it's going to pop up a screen that allows us to compare our lock record to our loan record because since they are separate, they could potentially have different information like our index type or anything that shows up in bold means that the lock record doesn't match the loan record. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the little checkbox next to all of the items that I want to push from my lock record over to my loan record. Now this is typically just used by the secondary marketing person. So uh, whatever is in your lock record will then be copied over to your loan record. There are quite a few reports and forms that are available in the secondary department, so let's take a look at a few of them. So this is the investor lock uh, and has not been drawn report. So if I enter in a start date and an end date, I can take a look at all loans that have been locked with the investor but have not yet had the loan docs drawn. So I can choose print, preview, email. In some cases, you may be able to choose send to Excel or send to Image Center. If we take a look at our investor locks expiring report, again, we can take a look at, based on the state range, all the loans that have investor locks that are going to expire within the date range that we enter. So here again, we can choose any of these options, send to email, preview, print, Excel, and it'll give us a list of all of those loans with locks with the investor that are about to expire. So I can see quite a bit of information and it's just that quick, just a few seconds and we have all of those loans. We also have a few other reports and forms like the lock activity. So these are all of your internal locks with your brokers or loan officers. So again, you'll enter in your date range and select how you want to view that report. We also have the locks uh, expiring, which are internal locks. So again, those locks, we want to know all of those locks with the broker or loan officers that are going to expire within the date range. We also have the um, lock profit report. So if you want to see uh, the lock profit by funder, by investor, you can do all of those. We also have the lock confirmation form. We can send it directly into Image Center or we can pre preview it on the screen, which confirms all of the lock information. Now you can send this to your broker or your loan officer. If you send it into Image Center and you're using WebLender as well, then they'll be able to see it directly in WebLender without having to show or send it to them. Now we show all of the adjustments so they can clearly see how that they're getting the pricing that they are. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just click on the icon to close it. Next, let's take a look at some work queues. To access your work queues, click on the icon located in the icon bar. Now the screen will pop up and you can actually move it anywhere within your desktop. The work queues are designed to give you a list of loans that the user needs to work on. So based on the selected queue, a different set of loans will display in the list. So for the secondary person, they'll want to take advantage of the investor locks expiring within five days. This will give you all the loans that fall within that criteria. We also have the locks expiring within five days. So this is going to give you all of those loans that are locked with the broker or the loan officer that are about to expire. The pending lock request is also a good work queue. Um, and when you do find your loan in the work queue, you can just double click on it and it will open it in ProLender. You don't have to go and uh, search for the loan. Next, let's take a look at some business rules. Let's take a look. So if I were to change the lock type on this lock record and I go to save my changes, 
Prolinger is going to notify me that the approved doc type is different from the locked doc type. So even though I'm using the lock reconciliation, Prolinger is still going to give me some of these business rules. So if when I go ahead and correct it to make sure that my lock and my loan record match, when I save again, Prolender will no longer give me that violation. I just have my warning saying that my lock will expire in two days. This concludes our secondary training. For more information, please visit Prolender Connect at prolender.com forward slash connect. You can send an email to support at prolender.com or call 858-974-4888 extension 2.